you went back five years ago, let's have a conversation about graffiti. And you put property owners, business owners, uh, and graffiti artists in a room. It would be mayhem. Initially, I admit, I thought all graffiti taggers, artists were punks. They were members who wanted to stake out at nighttime. And I would say, you can't do that. They wanted to grab somebody and, you know, teach them a lesson. We had such a big challenge with media, um, kind of already giving us an identity of being destructive. We at times are the victims of uh, vandalism as well, so um, as part of that, part of our job is, uh, and our duties is to try to maintain our infrastructure and make it look good. One night I was working late on the mural, so it was two in the morning, and these five street kids came along and uh, they started talking to me. And they said, uh, we do tagging. I said, uh, you do throw ups? Throw ups is a term for like a big piece of art. And um, they said, uh, no, nah, we just like to do tags. I said, well, guys, you know, anyone can do that. I said, the trick is, do a big mural, sign that. That takes We started out knowing that we had to address the issue of graffiti vandalism. We were also hearing a lot of other voices. And we, we saw that there was a great growth in street art and that street art was becoming an international phenomenon. I'm producing the Graffiti Summit Town Hall happening on May 31st, 2011 at the Drake Hotel in conjunction with the City of Toronto. This is your opportunity to come and have your say on the graffiti issue in Toronto. This plan captured both sides. It captured wanting to keep the city clean, needing to keep the city uh, presentable and, and finding ways to improve and, and add vibrancy to the city. At the core of the graffiti management plan is the value of respect. Our officers understand uh, the difference now more so than they did previously uh, about the difference between street art and graffiti or un unwanted tagging. What happens is that it, City Hall becomes more accessible. Youth are communicating that they feel they're building a city. Now we have a directory of over 90 uh, street and mural artists that want to work with us and Toronto businesses and residents to help beautify the city. While enforcement is essential, a community police partnership is the most effective way to prevent crime in neighborhoods. The Toronto Police Service has been a part of a collaborative effort which aligns perfectly with our community mobilization and engagement model. The plan has created opportunities for positive engagement with youth and helped us establish a robust partnership with City of Toronto Divisions. If you look at the portfolio of how many pieces of artwork have been funded through this program, you see such a diversity, which I think really reflects not only the various different communities that we have in Toronto, but even the artists who are doing that work. It's become like the AGO on the street. People are coming to our area, tours just to see the art. Every time I look at the Jesse Harris You've Changed installation on Queen Street West, I feel a shudder about how we've changed, how we've looked at things differently. And I think the graffiti management plan has been a great example of that. We really turned something around. The engagement factor there I think has been great and again it, it's a, a joint effort between Transportation Services, Municipal Licensing and Standards and Toronto Police Services. To the extent that we can make our streets more lively and more livable, um, I think public art is a great contributor to that. I think we're going to moving in the direction of being one of the best cities in the world with respect to art. We became the second coolest neighborhood in the world in large part because of that program and I give kudos because it makes me look good too so thank you.